Today we are going to see how we can create an exploring n particle system inside of Maya, where one particle basically emits into different uh, particles, and we'll see how we can create a custom color emission as well, where one color changes into multiple different colors. So let's see how we can do this. So I'm going to start off by simply switching to the FX menu, and we'll start off by creating a simple n particle system. So for that, I'm going to create a create an emitter, and as you can see, we have an emitter, n particle, and the nucleus. So I'm going to select my emitter and just bring it up to somewhere right about here, I think this is a good height. And here the rate per particle is 100, I'm going to make it 200. So to create an explosion out of it, what you basically need to do is, uh, the first thing that you have to do is, you just make it 200. And the first thing you want to do is, go to collision and turn on self-collide. That will help us create that kind of look. Now as you can see, the particles are continuously emitting, that means it's not going to give us that exploding look. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to the fifth thing and we are going to put a key on the emission rate. So here I'm going to right click and set key. And on the sixth thing I'm going to make this entire thing zero. Right click and set key. So now we'll get something like this. Alright, so now if you look at closely, we are getting this type of emission. Uh, although this, you can see the explosion is not that aggressive. So to create it a bit more or make it a bit more aggressive, what we can do is either we can play around with the mass value or damping value or we can also increase the speed value. So let's see if I give it a 5 number. There you go. So now we have something like this and I think it's a bit too much but maybe we can go for a number like 4. Alright, there you go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collider. So I'm going to take a simple plane. Alright, let's clean this up. There you go. And let's make this um, one one. We don't need that many subdivisions. I'm going to call this float. Alright. And let's create it a passive collider. Sorry, uh, we want to create it as a passive collider. There you go. So now if you play this, the particles are colliding perfectly. Now. Uh, the one thing that we want to change with this particle is the way they are behaving. Or for example, the first thing I'm going to go to my end particle sheet and here you'll notice that there is a bounciness. And then the bounciness has been set to 0. I'm going to make it to maybe 0 0.5 and let's see how this looks. Alright, so it's uh, bouncing a bit, looks very really nice. And if you want, you can further take it with a different type of dynamic collision, maybe you can uh, create more mass out of this or create a less mass out of it, it's totally up to you. The next thing we want to do is not play around with uh, any of this option, although if you want you can turn on spheres if you want, that will help you realize how your overall particles are behaving. And if you want you can also change the size of your particles to maybe like 0.3 if you want to differentiate how your overall particles are going to look, so maybe like make it even bigger to something like this and now we have, I think that just too big for this. Let's make something. There you go. Now we have something like this. Alright, so now to create a multiple particles um, emission from a single particle, what we have to do is create a particle event. So I'm going to turn this back to uh, points now, just for the demonstration purpose. We are going to make it uh, back into the sphere again. But for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to keep it to points. I'm going to select my end particle and uh, the passive collider that we have in the scene. I'm going to go to my end particles and uh, let's go for particle collision event rate. I'm going to open this up and here you'll notice that we have the end particle and end rate. What we want to do is create an event. Now the event type will be splitting all right, because we are going to be splitting with one particle into multiple particles and the particles will be random particles in the random number of particles. So number of particles here you will see is set to 1. I'm going to make this to somewhere like maybe 10. All right, you can keep it to 6, 20 however you want and uh, I'm going to keep the inherent velocity to 1 and I'm going to click on create event. Now you'll notice uh, the couple of things that have changed. The first thing you'll see is we have n rigid. The next thing you'll see is we have n particles too which is created by the event itself. So if I play this now, notice how the particles are reacting. So now as they fall down, they'll create more and more particles out of it. So if I go back here, I'm going to show this one more time. So as they, we have a couple of points and then they react and basically multiply into different particles. Again, if you want, you can go to your end particle too and um, add a bit more bounciness to them. Alright. 
Right, so the next thing we want to do is obviously we want to turn on the self collide. Uh, so we want a bit more aggression on the particles that are being created. Right. And the next thing we're going to do is basically go to the end particle and turn this back into the series. Right, let's see. So there you go. And you'll notice that uh, immediately as, as they come, come in contact with the plane or collide, they turn into the second particles. Basically multiplying. I'm going to turn this back to sphere as well, and let's uh, just maybe change the overall randomization of this particle there a little too dull for the scene. So I'm going to make this to something like this, alright, and let's make it randomized particle. And maybe okay, let's reduce the height a bit. Something like this. Alright, I think this looks good. So if we can see this now. Alright, looks pretty good. Um maybe I think the overall size on this one is too much. So I'm gonna just change this again. Alright, so now we have this kind of thing again. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna play around with a couple of things. The first thing is obviously if you notice that it's kind of floating in there, the reason is because the floor collision thickness is too broad for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, reduce this to maybe like 0 0.005 or maybe like 0 0.06 right? and also uh, let's go to nucleus and increase up steps to maybe 12 that looks like a good number alright and uh, yeah there you go so I'm going to maybe just play around with the small thing that is uh, the speed of this I'm going to make this two just to see how this overall reacts Right. And uh, maybe yeah, if we can increase a bit more friction into this, maybe point two, and a bit more bounciness into this. Let's go to n particle two, and uh, let's maybe increase the bounciness on this as well. And what I'm going to do is go to n particle and with the main particles here, I'm going to simply lower the mass value and be like point eight. Let's see. Right, alright, that looks pretty good um, to me. Okay, I think uh, we are good to go. Oh, uh, let's say if you change your mind and you have way too many particles in your scene, like we have in our scene here, what you can do is uh, you can basically select both the particles and you can go to basically select one. And if you really notice that we already have an event zero which we have created right now, which we are running. What I can do is I can go here and make it a number 6 and I can close this and if I go back and play this again you'll notice that the particles has reduced. So you can always go back and change them whenever you want. It's not uh, completely fixed or you don't have to go back again and again to create more and more um, events just to correct something. So yeah, there's that. And for the main particle again I'm going to reduce the mass value to maybe like 0.6. I'm just trying stuff here just to see if we can get uh, more out of this, maybe like point 0.8 and for this, maybe like point 0.8 as well. Alright, I think this looks good. And uh, for the main particle, again, I'm going to go to the emitter. Let's maybe increase the speed to 3. I think that will work perfectly. Alright, so there's that. So once we are done with all this animation, now comes the shading part, how we can shade this to change the color. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start off with a uh, static light, just so we can see, and let's uh, have a camera here. Let's use the camera. Alright. Make the focal length to 80. Alright, so I'm going to turn on my IPR uh, to see what... Uh, we have so this is what we got in our scene. So the first thing we'll do is shade the floor. Let's create a new material that will be our old sand surface. We have nothing much interesting in our scene. This is the same old uh, shading method that we do always. Alright, so we have something like this. And now for the main particle, I'm going to select my main particle, right click, and let's assign a new material and uh, let's add a sand surface. Now I'll call this black. And let's maybe make the metallic to 0.8 and 0.4. Right? And alright, so this is what the overall series looks like. Right? 
Now when I play this, notice how the basically overall color changes. Alright, see? So now the black spheres are basically turning into the white spheres, basically multiplying. So the main sphere are kind of disappearing because they are splitting into different particles. So that means we have to do two types of shading. One for the main particle and one for the secondary particle. What I'm gonna do is select the secondary particles, assign new material, and let's go to the side surface and we'll call this random particles. Right? And I'm gonna close this down. And go to the hyper shade. And let's go for random particles. Now, now, I've already made a video on how you can create uh, multicolor channels and so on. But if you want, uh, you can go back and check it out. But I'm just going to quickly do this. I'm going to take a color jitter and attach this to the base color. Right, so, in the color jitter, I'm going to feed information of maybe a color or something like blue. Right, let's see. And I'm going to go to a piece and let's maybe just change the color to something like this. All right. And let's see how it looks. I'm gonna switch this quickly to the GP. And let's see if it to let's see how this looks. Alright, so as you can see now the black spheres are changing into the random color, but they're looking pretty dull. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're going to do a small trick that is basically attaching this same path um connection to the emission color, right? And the next thing we can do is we can go to our random particles. And in the emission channel, I'm gonna make the emission to one. All right, that will give us this glowing kind of look. I'm gonna get rid of the sky dome right now, just so we can see the overall glow here. And if you want, what you can do is you can go back to your end particle and maybe change the color to white, or maybe create a small emission rate here as well, or maybe create a constant color. It's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna create this back to black and let's take a physical sun and sky so now you have something that looks like this and as soon as the particle falls down they basically change the color all right so yeah so this is uh, just an idea how you can create uh, multi particles from a single particle and uh, the amount of emission is totally up to you how much particles you want or what kind of color this is completely again uh, all of this is completely procedural you can always go back and change the number of Particles you have with the same, if you don't like the color, you can always go back and change the color. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty nice e trick you can use to create a very nice thing into your composition. So yeah, have fun, create something interesting out of this, and I'll see you next time.